Whether you are running a business of your own or working in the marketing department of some other organization, wouldn't it be great if you were able to increase prices and were able to sustain that price increase over a period of time without losing demand in the process? In today's video, I'll introduce the concept of price elasticity of demand, which will help you measure as well as keep track of whether this is happening in your business or not. And once you have this information with you, you are able to take much more informed decisions. So let's get started with today's video. The world of marketing is vast, complex and rapidly evolving. But with just a bit of help, it can be a lot of fun. On this channel, I simplify real-world marketing for all the curious minds out there. Hi, I'm Rahul and this is the business of marketing. If you are new to this channel, I suggest you hit the subscribe button now so that you can stay informed of all the new content that I keep on releasing. On a slightly personal note, I felt a lot of angst having witnessed some of the things that I really dislike and I wish they were being done differently. I'm not going to rant in this video, but I want to set the context which makes price elasticity of demand a very critical measure to always keep track of. Firstly, we know that there is an extreme quarter-on-quarter -quarter performance pressure on marketers these days. It is unlike what it even used to be a decade ago. Either because of this pressure or something else, there seems to be a lot of importance that is given to short-term performance, while not enough importance is given to long-term growth and success. As a result, there is much emphasis given to short-term sales boosting approaches as opposed to long-term brand and equity building approaches. We see promos, discounts, sale, price cuts happening all the time. Some of them tend to go on throughout the year. And sometimes these price cuts tend to go so deep that it almost makes you wonder if the brand or the business is even making any money. And we've all heard about the term burning cash for customer acquisition. Whereas these customers, they don't remain loyal and they move on to the next brand, someone that offers a much deeper discount. And watching all of this pains me, but I don't think me ranting over here is going to change anything at all. However, if you're a marketer, whether you're running your own business or working with some organization, I do suggest that you keep a tab on price elasticity of demand over the long term as much as you keep a very close eye on the short term, quarter on quarter kind of performance. Ultimately, wouldn't it be great if you were able to charge a premium and sustain that higher price without losing a whole lot of customers or an equivalent amount of customers in the process. So with that context in mind, let's look at what exactly is price elasticity of demand. The concept of elasticity comes from economics and it is pretty simple and it's usually applied to demand and supply. Elasticity is the percentage change in one variable in response to a change in another. It is a measure of responsiveness. How much does the demand or the supply change when price moves up and down? It always involves two variables where the percentage change in one variable in response to a percentage change in another variable gives you the elasticity. Therefore, if you had to measure X elasticity of Y, you would use the formula percentage change in Y divided by percentage change in X. So to calculate the price elasticity of demand, you need the percentage change in demand divided by the percentage change in price. There are three possible scenarios over here. The first scenario is when the price elasticity of demand is greater than one, it's known as elastic. When it is equal to one, it is known as unit elastic. And when it is less than one, it is known as inelastic. Let's look at three scenarios that show how the demand for books from a publisher changed with an increase in price. In the first scenario, the demand for books reduced by 30% when the price was raised by 20%. In the second scenario, the demand for the books reduced by 20% when the price was raised by 20%. And in the final scenario, the demand for the books reduced by 10% when the price was raised by 20%. Therefore, the price elasticity of demand in the first scenario is 1.5 and it is an elastic demand. In scenario two, it is one, therefore it is unit elastic demand. And in scenario three, it is 0.5, and this is an example of inelastic demand. I explained these three possible scenarios and I'm guessing you already have a sense of what should be the ideal scenario. The ideal scenario would be one where if the demand is elastic and you reduce it, 
and at the same time if the demand is inelastic can you make it even more inelastic in the real world though elasticity is used not just as a measure to understand the changes in demand but also as an effective tool to increase profits and control demand in situations where pricing can be made dynamic imagine surge pricing for taxis similarly both retail and e-commerce portal they use surge pricing depending on whether they want to increase profits or manage demand the use of elasticity of demand isn't always as simple as i showed in the example above uh, there are situations where some kind of a perceptual price barrier exists and that is extremely hard to break uh, think of scenarios where the price is uh, kept at 499 or 999 or 99.9 there are substitutes that consumers might shift to there are competitors who will react so there are a lot of factors which are important when you are looking at price elasticity of demand however despite these given realities that exist being able to make the demand relatively inelastic and being able to sustain that over a period of time is definitely an example of good marketing before i conclude today's video i wanted to quickly remind you about some of the measures that i have already discussed when it comes to price as well as demand you need to use a combination of some of these measures to be able to calculate the price elasticity of demand there are lots of ways in which you can probably get a sense of demand but i am talking about some of the hard measures which the marketers tend to use to try and get a better sense of whether demand is moving up or down and some of these measures are a uh, market share penetration sell in sell out dollar sales unit sale volume or equivalent sales it is possible that you might not completely relate to some of these terms so i have a couple of pre previous videos and i'll drop the links to those videos and you can refer to them so that you understand what i'm talking about much better next let's take a look at some of the pricing measures that you can use if you want to calculate the price elasticity of demand In my recent video I discussed the different measures of pricing you can refer to that but the pricing measures that will be most relevant for you if you want to calculate the price elasticity of demand are retail price average price per unit average price per volume everyday price or regular price and just because i love creating one master sheet where i can collapse all the information so here it is if you want to look at which are the demand measures you can look at market share penetration and the list goes on and if you want to look at what are the pricing measures you can look at retail price average price per unit and the list goes on so that's pretty much when it comes to price elasticity of demand and that brings me to the end of today's video it would be really good to have a conversation in the comment section to try and understand what are the different kinds of measures of long term success that you as a marketer look into and whether you are already using price elasticity of demand as one of those measures or not do let me know and if you like what i shared in today's video hit the like button and do subscribe to my channel and if you think it would be relevant for anyone else do share it with your friends or anyone else that you know in your professional network and thank you again for watching the business of marketing i will be back with my next video pretty soon